Hello Rockstars, I'm Allie, your Rockstar Bar Girl, and today we are going to be starting with our first cocktail recipe video. Yay! If you're following along on this channel as if it were a bartending course, then by now you should have watched all five of our Basics 101 videos and you're ready to start making drinks. We're going to get started with highball cocktails. We're starting with highballs for two reasons. First, because they are the most popular of all the types of drinks that you're going to be making in high volume service. They make up about 50% of all the drinks that you'll be making, while rocks, shots, and beers make up the other 50%. So they're super popular, you're going to be making them all night, and you need to know them. The other reason we're starting with highballs is because they're super, super simple. A highball cocktail is simply one ounce of a liquor or liqueur, and a highball glass with ice filled with a soda or and or juice mixer. You can have multiple mixers like cranberry and soda water, but as long as you have one liquor or liqueur and a non-alcoholic mixer, then we're talking about a highball cocktail. The great thing about highball cocktails is there really isn't very much to learn. At least there isn't much to memorize because your customer is going to be ordering their highball cocktails based on their ingredients. Highballs just don't usually have special names. So for example, a customer might come to your bar and ask you for a Captain Morgan and Coke, or a tequila and pineapple. They're telling you right in their order exactly what's in that drink, so there isn't anything to memorize or learn. All you have to do is take a highball glass, fill it with ice, add one ounce of the liquor that they asked for, and fill the rest of the glass with the soda or juice that they asked for. But there are a few cocktails that have special names to them or special rules that you're going to want to know and we're going to go over those today. So we're going to start off with highball cocktails that are made with soda as a mixer. Again, your customer will most likely come to the bar and ask you for their drink based on the ingredients. Like, can I have a vodka soda? Can I have a gin and tonic? And you're just going to make the drink based on what they requested. But there are five soda-based highball cocktails that have special names, and we're going to learn those. Those drinks are the Ricky, the Seven and Seven, the Highball, the Presbyterian, sometimes called the Press, and the Cuba Libre. So we're going to get started with making a Cuba Libre. You're going to need a highball glass, which is a 10 ounce cocktail glass. Fill that with ice. When building cocktails, always fill your glass to the top with ice. We do this because the amount of alcohol in our cocktail is measured, but the amount of mixer is not. If you don't fill your glass with ice, then what will happen is you will have a lot of room for your mixer, making the drink taste weak, even though there's a full ounce of alcohol in it. Some customers are mistaken in believing that asking for less ice means they're going to get a stronger drink. It's not true. More ice means the drink is going to have less mixer and taste stronger. So that's just something for you to know. Then you're going to need rum. Again, a highball cocktail is a cocktail with one ounce of alcohol, so we need one ounce of rum. Fill with your cola. Straw. Always garnish a Cuba Libre with a lime, and you're all set. That's a Cuba Libre, and that's the basis of all the highball cocktails that you'll make. One ounce of your alcohol, balance to the top with your mixer, add any garnish or straws, and serve. soda and a lime. So your customer can ask for different types of Rickies. You can have a vodka Ricky, a gin Ricky, tequila Ricky, amaretto Ricky. The term Ricky tells you that you're going to take one ounce of the alcohol they requested 
and then add club soda and a lime. So let's build a gin ricky. And again, the term ricky just means one ounce of alcohol filled with club soda and garnished with a lime. To make a gin ricky, we need one ounce of gin, fill with club soda, straw, garnish with a lime, and serve. Gin Ricky. All of your Ricky cocktails would be built exactly the same. soda-based highball cocktails that have special names. Before we move on to juice drinks, I just want to point out that there are a couple of important garnish rules that you should keep in mind when it comes to soda-based highball cocktails. The first rule is that any cocktail made with tonic water is going to be garnished with a lime. Vodka tonic, gin and tonic, tequila tonic. If tonic water is your mixer, then you're going to garnish that cocktail with a lime. That's rule number one. Rule number two is that whiskey-based soda highballs do not need garnishes at all. So a Jack and Coke, a Captain and Diet, a whiskey and ginger, these drinks do not need garnishes. If your customer requests it, of course, give it to them, but those cocktails should not be served with automatic garnishes. And rule number three is that it's very common to serve a vodka soda with a lemon or a lime. It's not a mandatory rule, but typically someone ordering a vodka soda would like a piece of citrus fruit to squeeze into their drink and give it some flavor. So I tend to ask the customer if they would like a lemon or a lime. They usually pick one of the two. You can put one on there automatically without asking, that's fine. But just know that typically someone who orders a vodka soda is going to want a garnish of a lemon or a lime. There's no need to demonstrate the seven and seven the highball and the Presbyterian because they follow the same model, so I've included the recipes for you here. Next, we're going to talk about highball cocktails that have juice mixers. Just like with your soda-based highball cocktails, your customer is probably going to tell you exactly what is in their drink, such as a tequila and pineapple or a rum and orange juice. But there are a few juice-based highball cocktails that have special names, and we're going to learn those now. Let's get started with the most popular of your juice-based highball cocktails, and that is the Vodka Cranberry, or the Cape Cotter. The official name for this drink is a Cape Cotter, but almost no one calls it that. Everyone orders it as a Vodka Cranberry, and it is the most popular juice-based highball. It's probably the most popular highball ever, and you will make tons of Vodka Cranberries, which is love their Vodka Cranberries. Tons of them, okay? So just like your soda-based cocktails, you just need a highball glass, one ounce of vodka, ice, and fill the rest up with your cranberry juice. It is common to garnish it with a lime. It's not required, um, so you don't have to automatically do it, but people often ask for a lime. What you really need to know, because people order the Cape Cotter as a vodka cranberry, you don't necessarily need to remember that a vodka cranberry is actually called a Cape Cotter because like I said, no one will order it that way. But what you do need to know are the three cousins of the Cape Cotter or the vodka cranberry. There are three cocktails that start off as a vodka cranberry and that add a different type of juice, giving the drink a different name. So we're going to get started with the Madras. The Madras is a vodka cranberry with orange juice. And this is the first time that you guys are going to see a highball cocktail with two different mixers. So let's take a look at what that looks like. To make a Madras, you need your highball glass. Fill that with ice. I need one ounce of vodka. The drink starts off like a vodka cranberry, so we'll add cranberry juice leaving myself room for orange juice. How much of each do I need? Equal parts, there's no need to worry about it. 
as long as you get both in the glass. So I need cranberry juice, and I need orange juice. Straw, and serve. That is a mattress. The next cousin of the Cape Codder is called a Bay Breeze. And again, we start off by building a vodka cranberry, one ounce of vodka, cranberry juice, leaving myself some room for the pineapple juice. Straw and serve. Vodka, cranberry, and pineapple juice, that's a bay breeze. The third cousin of the vodka cranberry is the sea breeze. One ounce of vodka, cranberry juice, and grapefruit juice. Straw, serve, sea breeze. Um, I've heard a lot of different ways in which people try to remember the two, um, but I think probably the easiest thing to remember is that there are seagulls by the sea. It can be really difficult to keep the Magis, the Bay Breeze, and the Sea Breeze straight in your head. They're really similar, so it's easy to confuse the two. I always just tell myself that there are seagulls at the sea. So, seagull, G for grapefruit. Whatever you do to come up with a way to memorize the difference between the drinks, then that's great. Coming up with little stories or acronyms um, will really help you keep similar recipes straight in your head. The next cocktail we're going to learn is the classic screwdriver. If you've never been in a bar before, you probably have still heard of this cocktail. Also very popular, not nearly as pop popular as the vodka cranberry, but a drink you need to know. A screwdriver is simply vodka and orange juice. So, I have my highball cocktail glass, one ounce of vodka, and fill with my orange juice. Add a straw and serve. Screwdriver. The term screw is one that you will hear come up in other cocktail names and it simply means vodka and orange juice. So whenever you hear that term, whether it's a comfortable screw, a slow comfortable screw, etc., that simply tells you, okay, I know that there's vodka and orange juice in this cocktail. So a screwdriver, vodka, and orange juice. Similar to a screwdriver is our next cocktail, the fuzzy navel. A fuzzy navel is one ounce of peach schnapps and orange juice. One ounce of peach schnapps. And orange juice. Straw and serve. A great way to remember the ingredients in a fuzzy navel is that peaches are fuzzy and navels are a type of orange. It's called a tequila sunrise. A tequila sunrise is one ounce of tequila filled with orange juice as your mixer with a grenadine float on top to create the effect of a sunrise. For a tequila sunrise, we need one ounce of tequila, fill with orange juice, and on top we're going to add a float of grenadine. Tequila sunrise. To make a sunset, we simply reverse the order, making sure that we add grenadine to the glass before we add our ice.
And finally, we're going to learn about the Greyhound and the Greyhound's cousin, the Salty Dog. A Greyhound is simply one ounce of vodka and grapefruit juice. And now that we've done all these highball cocktails, you know exactly how to make one. What we're going to practice right now is the Salty Dog, because the Salty Dog is a little bit more complicated. A Salty Dog is one ounce of gin, grapefruit juice, and a salted rim with a lime garnish. So the first thing I want to talk about is rimming your glasses. At your bar, you will probably have a rimmer, which is a two or three level um, box, I guess you could call it, that has sugar and salt in it and allows you to drop your glass down and rim it with salt or sugar. If you don't have a rimmer lying around, that's fine. Simply grab yourself a plate and add salt or sugar depending on the cocktail. For the salty dog, we have salt. You're going to take the lime, which is your garnish, and let's say you were making something with a sugar and lemon um, rim, like a lemon drop, then you would use the lemon around the top of your glass. We're gonna use the lime to make our glass nice and wet, and then I'm just gonna roll it around in the salt. And this is going to give me a salted rim. To our salted rim glass, we simply add ice carefully one ounce of gin, fill with grapefruit juice, straw, and garnish with a lime. When it comes to juice drinks, you'll probably notice that aside from the salty dog, none of those cocktails need garnishes. So for your juice-based highball cocktails, don't worry about garnish rolls. A final point about highball cocktails is that it's really popular for people to order them as doubles. There are two ways in which a customer can get a double highball cocktail. For example, a double vodka cranberry. You could make your vodka cranberry in a highball glass with two ounces of vodka instead of one. Or you could use a pint glass and literally make two vodka cranberries in one glass. Two ounces of vodka and then fill all the way to the top with cranberry juice. There is no rule on which way a double should be served. So to play it safe, I always just ask the customer what they want. It is common for a double that is made in a large pint glass to be called a double tall, and for a double that is made in the shorter highball glass to be called a double short. But it's really uncommon for your average customer to know that. They're just going to say, can I have a double vodka cranberry? and you need to make what they're expecting. So the best way to go about it is to just ask them what they want. Would you like that in a short glass or do you want that in a larger pint glass? Either way, there's no such thing as BOGO in the bar world. There's no buy one, get one free. There's no discounts for doubling things. So whether they put it in a larger pint glass or they keep it in the shorter highball glass, it's going to cost the same. What will be different is the taste. A double vodka cranberry made in the shorter highball glass is only going to have a little bit of room for cranberry juice. Therefore, the drink is going to taste very strong. The double vodka cranberry that's made in the larger pint glass will have room for more cranberry juice. Therefore, both drinks will have two ounces of alcohol in it, but the larger pint glass version won't taste nearly as strong. So that wraps up our highball cocktail video. We went through highball drinks that are made with sodas as a mixer and with juice as a mixer. And those represent the most popular high volume highball cocktails that you're going to want to know. Memorizing all of these drinks can be difficult and I strongly recommend that you make flashcards. It's the easiest way to drill these recipes in your mind, especially if you don't have a full functioning bar in which to practice. These are some of my flashcards. You'll see here that I have a flashcard for the 7 and 7. On the front of the card, I have the name of the drink, 7 and 7. On the back, I have the type of glass it goes in, highball. The ingredients with the amount of ingredients. And at the bottom, 
an indication of whether or not there's a garnish and what that garnish is. If you make all of your cards this way, flash yourself whenever you get a chance, you'll memorize these drinks a lot faster and have less confusion when you actually get behind the bar. Thanks for watching this video on highball cocktails. If you found it useful, make sure that you like this video. If you have any questions or any comments about what we talked about today, then leave a comment below. And of course, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Subscribe to this channel so that you get regular updates when each video comes out. As always, see you guys in the next video. Bye, Rockstars.